Happy New Year's, everybody. Um, for episode 15 of my vlog here, Out of My Mind, we've got Chuck Jones from Dopapod. I've been seeing Dopapod now for seven years, and I'm always impressed with their musicianship, and their shows are just jamming. And they are truly the future of the prog jam world. And it was just amazing to get to talk to Chuck here. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. And there will be a lot more coming next year. Happy New Year, and jam on. Well, heck yeah, man. Well, I've uh, been seeing you guys for like seven years now. I just saw you guys in Winchester at the Bright Box in April. Oh, cool, yeah. I thought that venue was awesome. It was it was great to see you guys like at eye level. Yeah, I, I remember we got there. They were like, our, our crew was like, why don't we just take the stage down? They're like, what do you mean? I was like, just, just take the stage down. It'll be better. And I think it really set up a really cool, unique vibe. I've seen uh, a few uh, shows there. And uh, that was the best one I've seen on the floor. And it just, it's just so different. Like, with the stage, it kind of takes away from, like, cause it's such a small venue anyway. So uh, not having the stage there was awesome. It was kind of like a house show. I mean, that's, that's how we started, too, is back in, in college. You know, we would, like, play house parties in basements out in Boston. So it's like, there's just, you know, as, as we've grown and become more professional, if you will, there's always this, like, a soft spot of just... Because there's just there's something about being at ground level level with everyone. You know? Sure. Like the, the the nerve of someone tripping over your shit and like spilling beer everywhere is like. <laughs> <that's> kinda... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was like right behind like your base amp, just like taking pictures and stuff. I was like, man, I feel like I'm like on the stage. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a really fun night. I remember for some reason being like nervous the first set which, really you know, it, it, that happens sometimes and but like that night specifically i felt like tense and nervous and i was like i don't know why i feel this way but then second set that all went away and i felt very calm and in control and i just felt like i was able to like relax and i have no idea what yeah no i mean I, I couldn't tell from my end but like your music the music sometimes you know ebb and flows it's so uh chaotic at points and then yeah. so uh dissonant in others so it's uh it's just, I just have, since the first time I saw you guys, I've just always uh, really dug your sound and how original you guys are. Thank you, appreciate it. And so that's what I was wondering is, uh, what do you think about the jam scene and how, how do you think that, that Dopapod fits in? Um, well, I guess I can give my, give a background a little bit. You know, uh, for me, I didn't grow up listening to jam music. Okay. Uh, and was never really a fan of it. And even when we first started playing back in 2000, early, like late 2000s, early 2010s, um, and we ended up in the scene. I mm-hmm. like, it took me so many years to admit that we were in a jam. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Cause it's so yeah. much more than that. Cause it's more than just jamming. It's progressive. It's, uh, it's actual songwriting and, you know, yeah. theory. But I think there's like, as I kind of let those walls down and just was like, okay, we're in a jam band and just like started to embrace that we were in one. Sure. I still was not listening to any, but I was like, okay, we're in here and that's cool. We get to jam. That's what we do. And as I've gotten older and older, you know, I finally started like listening to Grateful Dead and (laughs) I never liked the Grateful Dead, but then I had to learn a bunch of music. I did like a Grateful Dead set and I got to... okay the song dark star by them sure and i was listening to it and i was like i was like what the fuck is going on <laughs> that's like, awesome what, are, what is this and i was so confused but like interested and something clicked and i called my friend uh craig broadhead who formerly played guitar for turquoise okay yeah yeah of course yeah i was like i was like man i need you to explain this song to me <laughs> that's awesome He's, yeah so, he like sat down and we kind of dissected it and then for whatever reason that opened up my it broke down that wall and then i did a set of dead music i was like all right these songs are great like i get their style of improvisation i mm-hmm. get the songwriting like i just kind of was like again like diving deeper and deeper into it and then i don't know over the last few years i've really just come to love and embrace and think that we're in a really unique absolutely and special scene and band you know where we get up there we have and you have no expectations really besides jamming you know yeah really no one expects anything more than that yeah and it's you know it's like there's a 
the level of respect and trust that you have with the people that you've sure. been playing with for so long. It's yeah. like, you know, because you'll get up there, and some nights th- things are played a little bit safer, but other nights you, like, get somewhere totally new. Yeah. And you're like, you can just trust that we can all trust each other. Like, all right, we're paying attention, we're listening, you know, we're like... Some role somewhere completely new and vulnerable in front <laughs> of people. And in front of like, people, right? <laughs> you know, it's like so. But the more and more you do that, the more and more you just like get out of your own head and really try and pay attention to everyone else. It's just like such a cool and unique thing we get to do. It kind of goes along with the question I was going to ask about how transitioning to that uh, recording studio is for you. Um, like, how does the dynamics change in the band or anything like that? Because I know you just recorded a, a new album, or just released, at least. Yeah, um, it changes from album to album. Um, I've personally come to enjoy recording more. Because mm-hmm. I used to just get in there and be like, okay, like we have to nail this. Like I have to have all my parts perfect right. and all these stuff. And eventually it's different for a drummer and some other people that for a bass player, and you just you know plug into my a little DI box and then <laughs> start recording. I'm like, I can fuck up all I want and like come back. Like I might as well just try something and just like go, f- go for it. Because if I mess up, I'll just click back in and do it. Right. So it gets to like a recording now that you have more openness to recording, like you're willing to take chances and try new things with recording. Yeah. Just because for me, it just rather than being stressed out and tense in the studio about nailing it, I can kind of just, remind myself like it's all good if you mess up just like don't don't do anything so offensive that other people are gonna mess up like don't just like not play the song but sure. if you want to like kind of open up and take some chances like it you know a lot of so many great sessions and music that's been recorded by, by people doing that you know just like really going trying to stuff to- and do you have a producer yeah. on that album that you're working with no, we, we've done a, a bunch of albums with this guy uh, named Jocko up at More Sound Studios in okay. Syracuse. So we did this last one with him. He he functions as you know a producer and all engineer. All yeah, he'll jump in and like you know if, if we have questions, we'll ask him. But he doesn't ever try and like dictate anything to us. We'll okay. Like, so are you? So you guys are? Uh, are you like trying to record new songs and write new songs together constantly, or you take a break and write later? And well, I mean, we recorded that album before the pandemic. So oh wow! Like, yeah, it's been around for a while. It's, it's just felt so good to get it out. And oh, that's awesome. Like, yeah, and people seem to be liking it a lot, which is cool because I kind of like, you know, it's one thing if you record an album and you get it out, but this has just been like sitting around for so long. <laughs> that I think we're kind of relieved to get it just to get it going sure that's awesome yeah i really some of the songs reminded me of like classic dopapod for me like mucho it reminded me of that sound yeah. that for me is like classic dopapod <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome uh but any inspiration for the new album like for you personally uh, like musical creative, inspiration player. creativity i don't know anything like that yeah you're playing your thought process yeah i think you know just trying to be conscious of when you know because anybody is a as a musician you can be like oh i should be making it more interesting or my bass Mm -hmm. part is boring but sometimes it's like especially as a bass player just you this song requires two notes (laughs) follow this follow the kick drum like that's what makes sense here and then other times you know like another song uh, on um grow like my parts are a lot more that's a lot busier playing, but I wasn't consciously thinking about that. It's just kind of like what, what the song called for. for. Yeah. What I was feeling for that. How do you keep things fresh on stage for you guys and exciting for you guys and the crowd? Hmm. That's a great question. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think we really consciously have to think about that. It's just sort of, you know, some nights feel fresh and others don't. I think if you're, if we're practicing and, individually we're feeling good and healthy mentally and physically that's like the best way to just be there if you're just kind of up on stage and not feeling great and like whatever you and someone else got an argument that day or whatever it is you know but as long as as long as the four of us are just like the relationship is healthy and then individually we are too i think that that just like helps you kind of explore and keep it fresh right i don't know if there's like a direct answer to that question 
Um, so I know you guys go on tour with other bands. Are there any bands that you're friends with, or that you want to like give a shout out, like that you that I maybe I don't even know? Or I just saw the Wood Brothers again on Saturday or something up in Burlington, and they're just. I think they're they're one of my top five favorite touring acts right now. Oh, okay, the Wood Brothers. Yep. Yeah, I mentioned I mentioned to our our emails like do a double pod Wood Brothers tour, and they're like that's not really the same. <laughs> Not the same at all. But, uh, but they like our manager knows their manager, so she's like, "I'll mention it." So that's know. awesome. That would be so interesting. That interesting dynamics. Yeah, I mean, it's probably not going to happen, but you might as well ask. You, you can know. you can pipe dream. Yeah, exactly. I was just gonna I was just gonna ask you like crazy road stories. I always try to ask. Uh, I asked uh, Aqueous about one, and they told me about a prostitute flashing their vagina saying "pew pew." That's the best one I've had so far. This, these, these are the kind of things like when the four of us are sitting around, they come out so naturally, but yeah. we so I can't remember. I mean, the craziest thing that's happened recently, just we're on tour with George Clinton right now, and there's like yes. 20 people in his band. Sure. And, I mean, we played Central Park yesterday, which was... Oh, wow. You know, yeah, we played Central Park with the Motet, Pimps of Joy Time, and then George Clinton, and just like playing that place, and then like we're done, and we're hanging on the side of the stage, and all of you know George Clinton playing these iconic Parliament songs. Pretty pretty unique situation we're in at the moment. And you get to like hang out with him or talk to him and learn yeah, from I him at least. I haven't met him yet, but everybody else I've met on his on, in his band is super nice and super cool. I mean, that's all. It's just awesome to be able to listen to that and you be there for that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you wanted to say about the new album, Grow? Because that's mainly what I was interviewing about. No, I'm just excited to have it out there. We'll seem to be enjoying it and you know we felt felt a lot of positive recognition about it which you know is you know if you release an album you would like people to like it <laughs> yeah well, that's good for us yeah like i said it's got some classic dope pod sounds in there so i think you did a great job hey i appreciate that <laughs> well it was great meeting you chuck and i hope to see you out there on the road sometime 